This video was brought to you by Brilliant. On Sunday, Finns headed to the polls to elect a new parliament. Now, since the last elections in 2019, Finland has been ruled by a centre-left coalition led by the Social Democratic Party. Now, this coalition was originally led by Antti Rinne, a veteran of the SDP, but he resigned as prime minister just a few months later, after mishandling trade union protests. And this made way for Sanna Marin. When she came into power, Marin was just 34 years old, making her the youngest Finnish prime minister in history by quite some margin. And at the time, she was also the world's fourth youngest state leader. Since then, she's become a bit of a political rock star, well known across Europe. But unfortunately for Marin, while the SDP's vote share has increased slightly compared to 2019, at last weekend's election, her party lost to the centre-right National Coalition Party, who will now be tasked with trying to form a government. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how Finland's elections and political systems work, what happened in last weekend's election, and why Sanna Marin lost. So, let's start by taking a look at Finland's electoral system. The first thing to say here is that Finland has a semi-presidential system of government, which means that it has two sets of national elections. Elections for the president, who basically oversees Finland's foreign policy and is elected every six years, and parliamentary elections, which happen every four years. Now, last weekend's elections were parliamentary elections to select Finland's next parliament, prime minister and government. For these elections, Finland uses a proportional representation system, over 13 multi-member constituencies, to select 200 MPs. Now, because the number of MPs in each constituency is proportional to the constituency's population, Finland's parliament usually reflects the electorate's vote share. So if a party gets 20% of the vote, chances are they'll get about 40 seats, plus or minus a few. Now, because Finland has a proportional representation system, coalition governments are the norm. And for most of recent history, Finnish politics has been dominated by three well-established parties. The centre-right Kokomos, known in English as the National Coalition Party, the centrist Centre Party, and the centre-left Social Democratic Party, commonly known as the SDP. Now, since the 80s, these three would usually get somewhere between 15 and 30% of the total vote each, and whoever came out on top would form a coalition government, normally with the backing of a whole load of smaller parties. However, in the last decade or so, Finnish politics has been disrupted by the rise of the Finns party, previously known as the True Finns. Now, the Finns are basically a right-wing populist outlet, founded in the mid-90s as the successor to the Finnish Rural Party, who focused heavily on immigration. Now, for the most of modern history, the Finns have polled at about 5%, but they achieved a massive electoral breakthrough in the 2011 election, winning 19.1% of the vote and 39 seats overtaking the centre party to become the third largest party in the Finnish parliament. And since then, they've become a major player in Finnish politics. They became the second largest party by seats in 2015 and formed a coalition government with the winning centre party. And despite losing half of their MPs in 2017, their more moderate offshoot, the Blue Party, still did pretty well in 2019, coming second again. But this time, the winning party was the SDP, who refused to form a coalition with the Finns on ideological grounds. The SDP instead formed a coalition with the Centre Party and three other small left-leaning parties, the Green League, the Left Alliance, and the Swedish People's Party. Now, as we mentioned in the intro, Ante Rinne was quickly succeeded by Sanna Marin. And since this, Marin has had a pretty good tenure by most standards. The Finnish economy fared better than most of its European counterparts during COVID, and Marin has been widely commended for her response to Putin's invasion of Ukraine. When Putin was deploying troops on the Ukrainian border, she initially resisted the idea of joining NATO, but quickly came around to it after Putin invaded and it became clear that it was popular among the Finnish public. 
Now, there was a semi-scandal last year surrounding Marin when she was filmed dancing with friends, but it doesn't seem to have really hurt her approval ratings all that much. And while there's a fair bit of variation among the polls, a survey by a major Finnish newspaper in December found that 64% of Finns and 69% of women approved of her tenure. That's why it came as a bit of a shock, at least to the English-speaking press, when on Sunday it was announced that Marin's SDP had lost to both the National Coalition and the Finns party. So why was this? Especially considering that Marin was seemingly so popular. Well, as we see it, there are at least three reasons that explain these results. Firstly, while Marin was personally popular, her coalition just wasn't. Polling gave the National Coalition a steady lead running into the election. And while Marin's SDP actually did better than they did in 2019, all of her coalition partners did worse. These results also suggest that there was a fair bit of tactical voting going on, with left-leaning voters shifting away from the smaller parties and towards the SDP to try and increase the chances of Marin staying on as Prime Minister. The second reason, though, beyond the changes in her coalition, is that the Finns have successfully moderated their image since their new leader took over in 2021. Now, while the party are still staunchly anti-immigration, they no longer want to leave the EU outright. And they've also reined in some of their social spending programs. The third reason that Marin struggled, though, is that the dominant issue in the campaign was the economy. Finland's year-on-year -year inflation rate is currently at 8.8%, and the combination of a generous welfare state and an aging population is expected to push up the state deficit to 3% of GDP in the next couple of years. Now, to tackle this, Marin and the SDP said that Finland needed to let more young migrants into the country, as well as investing harder in health and education to increase the long-term growth of the country. However, her opponents disagreed, basically saying that they needed to cut welfare spending in order to balance the books. And unfortunately for Marin, it turns out that, like their northern European neighbours, Finns are apparently pretty conservative about fiscal policy, which is why they voted for the National Coalition and the Finns, who want to get debt to GDP down to 60% within a single term. So what happens next? Well, the National Coalition will get the first chance at forming a government, but that won't be easy. In an unfortunate coincidence, the four opposition parties won exactly 100 seats, just one seat short of a majority. This makes a right-wing coalition with the Finns mathematically difficult, which might force the National Coalition to try a grand coalition with Marin's SDP instead. Now, negotiations are expected to take a few weeks. So if you don't want to be left surprised by the results, as much of the Western media already has been, then be sure to subscribe so that we can keep an eye on what happens over the next weeks, days, and even minutes. But while we're waiting, it only takes a few minutes every day to massively improve your skills and safeguard your career against artificial intelligence. That's by investing in your own human intelligence. And that's where Brilliant.org comes in. Brilliant.org is the best way to learn maths and computer science in a fun and interactive way. Brilliant has thousands of lessons from foundational and advanced maths to AI, data science, neural networks, decision making, and more, with new lessons added monthly. That logical decision making course is super interesting too, using principles from maths and science to help you reach your own decisions. And I'm not naming any names, but perhaps some politicians ought to get a Brilliant account. Anyway, you can try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days by clicking our link in the description. Plus, the first 200 TLDR viewers to do that will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks for your support, and thanks for watching TLDR.